Good evening. I am here to read Ghost Boys to you. I'm reading, it's starting on page 75 and section alive. So we just left off where um, we got a little bit of the courthouse appearance where he, we got to meet the officer that shot Jerome. Um, and so they were asking him, did you realize it was just a kid? And then we realize that the only person that can see Jerome, his grandma can feel him. He can't see, or she can't see him. But the only person that can see Jerome is Sarah, which if you guys remember, Sarah is the police officer's daughter who is the same age. Um, we also find out that the gun that Carlos had was a toy gun. Um, so we leave off after... I think it was on page 70. We leave off on page 70 where it, he says, I wish I'd never met Sarah. Because Sarah starts to question some things herself, and so does Jerome. So now we're back on the section alive. December 8th, school. Carlos sits in the row across from me through every subject. Language arts, history, math. Sometimes his head drops onto his desk, like he hasn't had enough sleep. He's skinny. Much skinnier than me. Skinnier than Kim. I want the bell to ring. I've done too much already. Helped Carlos. Watched Mike, Eddie, and Snap pretend they weren't scared. I'm exhausted, anxious, tense. Today I wasn't stomped. Wasn't so lonely. I'm confused. Being good gets me in trouble. Scaring bullies gets me out. I don't like it. I don't like thinking about how to keep myself safe tomorrow. And the next day, I don't have a toy gun. So I just want to clarify, so every time we go back to a live, we go back to the same day, December 8th. So um, we just kind of pick up where we left off. So this is the end of day 8, or December 8, not day 8, sorry. The bell rings. Bye, I say to Carlos. I dash out the room, lugging my backpack. I rush through the school door, down the steps. On the sidewalk, I wait for Kim. Kids rush by me. Surprising me, Carlos tugs my coat. Hey, let's hang out. Cold shivering, he says. I can be late. My mom won't mind. He's grinning, wide awake now. He lifts the gun partway out of his pocket. We could play. Pretend we're taking down zombies. No, I shake my head, trembling. We're friends now, aren't we, Jerome? I frown at the shape in his pocket. I remind myself it's a toy, not a gun. I shake my head again. I have to go home. Then you take it. Give it back tomorrow. Jerome? My sister. Carlos nods. Hey. Kim smiles sweet like she thinks Carlos is cute. I'm Carlos. Jerome is my friend. Kim smiles brighter. Hey, Carlos. She's not used to anyone calling me friend. Carlos grins. Chicago's not so bad. He offers the gun. Kim steps back. I shift my body so people can't see. It's okay, Kim, says Carlos. It's just a toy. Carlos puts it in my hand. The plastic feels light, clammy. Play with it, Jerome. No, I say, sliding my hand free. It'll be fun. You can scare the bad guys. Kim, you won't believe what we did. Don't. I don't want Kim to know what happened. Got it. Sorry. He steps closer, murmuring. I'm just trying to say thanks, Jerome. You helped me out a lot. Good friends share. You can bring it back tomorrow. Carlos is serious. He looks like a mouse. One of the nicest in a Disney cartoon. All curious, helpful, and worried at the same time. Kim stares at me. Her eyes are telling me no. Don't do it. The sky is overcast. There isn't any snow, just dirty mounds of ice on the ground. Kids are escaping school, yelling and shouting. Across the street are some dealers. Principal Alton watches them. Nobody is approaching me, Carlos and Kim. I study the gun. The gun's blackness is bold, startling. I'm always good, and Kim, teasing Kim doesn't count. I say what Grandma wants to hear, calm her and Ma, watch out for Kim, play Minecraft for just an hour, okay, sometimes too, do my homework, even act nice when Mr. Myers isn't asking me, he's asking the whole class, to welcome the new kid. Sucker, that's me. Why can't I have some fun? Why can't I pretend I'm a rebel and Rogue One? Better yet, scare Eddie if he tries ambushing me on the way home, or jumping me tomorrow on the way to school? Why am I the only one who's scared all the time? It's just a toy, I whisper to Kim. It won't do anything bad. The gun rests in Carlos' brown palm. My head aches. My stomach hurts. Grandma and Ma won't like it. Pop will get mad. Weird. Kim's words make me want to take the toy more. It's okay, 
says Carlos. In the cold, his breath blows smoke. It's okay. Carlos spins, tucks the toy into his pocket. I clutch his arm. I want to play. Carlos grins. Shyly, he slides the toy to me. Bye, he says, jogging, then running full out. I grip the handle. It's firm with ridges. The barrel doesn't spin, but the trigger cocks just as if you were loading or firing a real gun. I look down the rounded muzzle. There aren't any plastic bullets or pellets. My hands shake. I look up. Light snow falls. Shiver. It's just a toy. Why am I scared of a toy? I made a friend, I say to Kim as if that explains everything. She scowls and starts walking home, her lips taut, thin like Ma's when she's angry. Today was a good day. I didn't get hurt. I didn't get beat. Today was a good day. I made a friend. I keep chattering, and though she's my little sister, she's street smart. She knows how lonely my school days are. She knows I'm begging, begging without saying, Don't tell, don't tell, baby, don't tell Ma or Grandma, especially not Pop. She slips her hand in mine. I know I'm safe. We walk home. My left hand feels how warm Kim's gloves are. Like Carlos, I don't have any gloves. My right hand clenches the plastic in my pocket. It burns. Back to dead. Preliminary hearing, Chicago Courthouse, April 18th. Were you surprised you shot a child? Asked and answered, Your Honor, says the defending lawyer. I'll rephrase. Why were you surprised? Asked the lawyer calmly. Can't you tell the difference between a boy and a man? Yes, of course. I mean, it was dark. Daylight. The judge's face is like a mask. Her hair is silver. She peers at Officer Moore. Officer Moore swallows. Yes, daylight. He was big. More than any other 12-year-old? Yes, bigger. Are you prejudiced? No. Liar! Someone shouts. Quiet, the judge warns, tapping her gavel once. I look across the courtroom at Sarah, eyes wide, her elbows in her knees, her palms cupped over her head. I'm standing next to her father, studying him. Have you heard of racial bias? No. Heard prejudice can affect your thoughts, actions, whether consciously, knowing, or unconsciously? I'm not racist. Possibly you are responding to unconscious stereotypes of black men as large, threatening, dangerous? No, I acted with just cause. How tall is your daughter? Objects! Objection, says the seated lawyer. Sustain, answers the judge. I'll ask another way. Would it surprise you if I told you Jerome Rogers, the child you killed, was no taller than five feet, 90 pounds? Officer Moore is surprised. Her palms pressed tight against her ear. Sarah bows her head. She can't see her father squirm. I can. Then it's my turn to be surprised. The ghost boy sits beside her. He tries to hold Sarah's hand. She doesn't flinch. Neither hand meets. They can't. He is dead. She's alive. Sarah sees us both. Ghost boy extends his hand toward me like I'm supposed to hold it. Be grateful? I flinch. What am I supposed to do? What does it mean? Officer's more plump-faced lawyer asks for a lunch break. The judge agrees. For a few seconds, she closes her eyes. I think it doesn't matter if Sarah can see me and the ghost boy. It only matters that the judge sees Sarah's dad is lying. People file out of the courtroom. Pop is steadying both Ma and Grandma. Officer Moore guides his wife, hand on her back. I don't move. Sarah and the ghost boy walk out of the courtroom, turning once to look back at dead me. Lost. You saw him today, didn't you? Sarah doesn't act surprised. She knows who I'm talking about. He say anything? She shakes her head, her feet dangling off the bed. I think there's a reason I see him too. I wish you'd hurry up and figure it out. Why do you? What? See him? What if it isn't because you're... Don't say it. Of course it's because I'm dead. Yet even as I say it, I feel there's another reason too. Downstairs, a door slams. Sarah's mom and dad are shouting. Glass breaks. Administrative leave, murmurs Sarah. Drives dad crazy. He's getting paid? Yes. I clench my hands. Pop wouldn't mind getting paid for not working. Sarah's eyes tear up. Sorry, I say, though I'm not. Sarah's not stupid, but even if I were alive, he, we wouldn't live in the same world. Hers is a fantasy world, like a TV family in a huge house with plenty of money, food. Being poor is real. 
Our church has a food pantry, emergency dollars for winter heating. Last year when Ma's appendix broke, when her sick leave was gone, we got bread, peanut butter, and applesauce. Does Pop know Officer Moore gets paid for not working, for killing me? I want to kick something, scream, break down, but what's the use? Sarah's dad shooting me is real. Sarah believes her dad isn't lying. I run my fingers along book spines. I open some. Their sticker saying, This book belongs to Sarah Moore. Kim would love it here. All her books are from the library. She would love owning one, love writing her name, Kim Rogers, declaring a book is hers. One of Sarah's books has a boy flying on the cover. There's a silhouette behind him, a shadow figure with arms outstretched and toes pointed, his body floating on the wind. Peter Pan. This book good? The best. I flip to the first page. I read the first line. All children except one grow up. I frown. But what happened? Did he die? No, Sarah's face reddens. He doesn't die. He stays a kid. He wants to stay a kid. There are the magic words, ghost boy appears. Just like that. He's not here, then here. Shazam! God, his eyes are big. Black pools to drown in. He's wearing his black tie and wide-brimmed hat. He's got fat cheeks and dimples. You look like a chipmunk, I say. Sarah giggles and the boy laughs, a gurgling, deep, rich sound. Who wants to stay a kid? He asks. Me and Sarah stare at the ghost boy. Funny. Stupid. Funny. Three kids, two dead, talking about Peter Pan. I'm not as lonely, not as scared, I think, not as sad as I am with my family. Maybe being dead isn't real after all. Maybe this is my fantasy. Maybe I'm dreaming or stuck in a storybook. I blurt. I always wanted to be grown. Being a kid sucks. Everybody telling you what to do, trying to be good all the time, escaping bullies, pushy crews, cashiers who think you're trying to steal. I was going to be, my lips scrunch a basketball player, making amazing three-point shots. Never mind them shorts. I was going to be a baseball player, says Ghost Boy, like Ernie Banks, first African-American to play for the Chicago Cubs. Lots more African-Americans play for the majors. Not then. When was then, asked Sarah. 1955. Air sucks out of the room. Sarah's pink walls start to make me feel sick. Even Ghost Boy's papery thin clothes and skin glow pinkish yellow. You've been dead years? Decades. I wish I could cry. I wish there wasn't a ghost kid in the room with me. I wish I wouldn't mind staying a kid if I could be alive. I wouldn't care that I couldn't grow up. I trace Peter's silhouette on the cover. He's really flying. I thought I could fly from a bullet. Pittingly, Ghost Boy watches me. Sarah's eyes tear up. Don't pity me. I say, sharp, frustrated by Sarah. Maybe I can help you, help you both, like Wendy helped Peter. Is Peter white? He's white, isn't he? I ask, insistent, furious. Sarah looks at me, quizzical. What are you going to be, Sarah? I shout. You're the only one who's going to grow up. Ghost Boy touches my arm, and I'm surprised that I feel him. His hand is warm, comforting. It's also taut, controlling me. It's not Sarah's fault, he says. Sarah can change. She's changing. I'm here to help you both. You can't help me. My mother, my father, my sister couldn't help me. I want to move on. There, I say. I'm dead. I don't care anymore why I died. I just want to do go. Get away from my family's pain. From you and you, I say to Sarah. It matters why my dad shot you. Why? So you can feel better? Sarah starts crying and I feel like the bullies that I hate. I want to move on. Why haven't I moved on? I ask the ghost boy. Why haven't you? Are you trapped too? I want to show you something. Ghost boy spreads his arms and moves towards the window. It feels as if he's guiding me like gentle wind. Can Sarah feel it too? We three stand at the window watching night cloaking the world. See? A shadow, then another, and another, another, and another. Hundreds. Thousands of ghost boys standing, ever still looking up through the window into our souls. Do I have a soul still? I don't understand. These are your, our people, Sarah gets. I punch the wall. Nothing happens. No cracking or paint peeling. Black boys, Sarah whispers, then clamps her hand over her mouth. This is messed up. These are kids killed like Jerome. Killed like you, asks Sarah. 
Ghost Boy nods. I turn from him and Sarah. I look down. Hundreds and hundreds of shadow boys. A heart-wrenching crew. Army strong. No zombie acom- No, they are zombie apocalypse strong. Standing on lawns in the streets, their faces raised to me. All children except one. Grow up. I'd give anything to grow up. Sari buries her face in a puffy pillow. Stop crying, I want to shout. But instead, I murmur. The bed is nice. It's pretty. Being nice is automatic. How stupid to be nice. I always tried. What did it get me? I'm getting angrier and angrier. I explode. My hand connects. Peter Pan flies across the room. The book hits the wall and drops to the floor. Sarah, you all right? A call from downstairs. I'm okay, Daddy. Sarah's eyes are different now, frightened again, nervous. Ghost Boy shakes his head like he's disappointed in me. Not fair, I think. I holler. Why do I need a white girl looking after me? You're right, but maybe you're supposed to do something for Sarah. Nah, nah, that's sick. Her dad kills me and I'm supposed to help? Who are you anyway? Emmett. Emmett Till. I remember Pop shouting, Grown men, armed, threatened a boy. Emmett, like Emmett. You're the Chicago boy, murdered, like me. 1955, down south. Everybody knew the south was dangerous then. Still is, answers Emmett. Sarah's chin rests on her chest. Disgusted, it's my turn to disappear. Emmett was dumber, stupider than me. I wasn't in the old south. I was in the north. I was playing five blocks from my home. So why am I dead? I shouldn't be dead. I shouldn't. Real. Real is graduating high school. Real is maybe going to college. Real is getting a job. Though I won't be a sanitation worker like my dad, maybe an electrician or a business manager, being president is a fantasy, so is being a basketball player. Real is making enough money to help my folks pay off their house, buying him lots and lots of books, not Peter Pan. Real is me having a girlfriend, maybe. Emmett sits beside me on the church steps. Moths hover, batting their wings at the street lights. The moon is almost full. Fireflies b blink. Sitting together, someone might think we're buddies. If they could see us. If they could see us, they might see how I'm slayed, crippled with grief. They might see Emmett, quiet, head down. He lays his arm over my shoulders to still my trembling. It doesn't help. Dead is too real. For me, basketball was real, Emmett murmurs. Crack. I love the... Baseball sucks. Crack. I love the sound of the bat hitting the ball. Loved running round bases and sliding into home. Tonight feels different. Emmett has something to say. I can't help but listen. Just as I can't help knowing sadness has a smell. It's a musty closet with rotting foods and maggots. Real, Emmett says, was going to college. Mother was on the honor roll. Only the fourth black kid to graduate her school. She became a teacher. Mother said, do better than me. Be a principal, lawyer, doctor. Crossing my fingers behind my back, I would promise. Yes, Mama. Emmett chuckles. Short stop. That's all I ever wanted to be. Mean, I say. Basketball. Nobody plays basketball no or baseball no more. Black kids play the court. Want to be Jordan, James, Curry. Lame if you can't dribble and throw. Emmett sighs and wraps his arm. I don't know those names. Truth is, I'm lousy at basketball. Now I'm getting good at bullying. Wish I didn't still have feelings. It sucks feeling sorry for another ghost. Emmett murmurs. Baseball, basketball, not much difference, is there? Times change. It's people's need to change. N nodding, Emmett agrees. People change, but not enough at the same time. Or maybe people change, then forget they've changed and keep hurting. Chicago didn't used to be so dangerous. Still, my mother was strict. Family and faith, that was what mattered, she said. It helped when I had polio. Polio, what's that? I'm irritated, I don't know. Paralysis, muscles like jello. I walked with a limp. Stuttered, too. I'd whistle, especially with sounds. What? The hardest time making sounds come out right. How'd you die? I look straight at Emmett, eye to eye. There's a softness to him, like he's a little old man dressed in a cheap suit. In school today, he'd be bullied worse than me. Now's not the time. You are not ready. I can't believe this. You know everything about me, but I don't get to know you. Emmett hangs his head. The brim of his hat doesn't even cast a shadow on the ground. Summer. Mother wanted me to go to Nebraska with her, he says softly, not raising his head. Instead, I went to see my cousins in Mississippi. I should have gone to Nebraska. I wait. 
and wait, not another word. That's it? That's all you're going to say? Unbelievable. Believe this, Jerome. It matters that Sarah can see you. And I'm supposed to help her? Got anything better to do? He got me. Absolutely nothing. I'll pick back up with a new chapter, me and Sarah, tomorrow. See you guys then.